Hi, this is Prakar Iropar MD, and as you know, my shop we fix mobile devices, data recovery, specializing in pretty much everything from flat screen to even AR drone repair. And I've been getting a lot of requests about trying to explain the click of death on the hard drive. And what we have right here is a 40 gigabyte Seagate internal hard drive, and this hard drive I've taken apart already, but I'm just going to open it up to show you as an anatomy. Number one, this is this, a disclaimer for you guys. Uh, never open a hard drive that you intend to use again in a room like this. You need a clean room environment. I'm opening this just to give you guys the specific on how the components of a hard drive works and the common issues. Okay, First thing is we can re-examine examine the hard drive. This one has six screws, uh, star screws, one here, 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 and here. Most hard drive has a, another screw underneath that's covered. You know, this one I've taken apart already, but I'll show you what the other screw is. All right. And this, this is the other screw, okay? Let's go ahead and look at the back. Before you open the hard drive, if you experience the click of death, examine the logic board. Sometimes you might have a burnout logic board. It could be one of these resistors. The best way to not actually enter the drive and fix it is a pretty easy fix. Uh, that is simply replacing the logic board. And keep in mind, you have to buy the logic board identical to the hard drive. You can't use a, say, a a Western Digital on a Seagate logic board. You gotta make sure it's a Seagate logic board for 40 gigabytes. And so, and this is how you would do it. Using the star screwdriver, you just go ahead and just take all components. Removing each screw. Okay, and again, that's pretty much it. All you do is, if you see a bad logic board, you go ahead and replace it. And that should fix the issue. In this case, the logic board here is fine, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back in. And we're going to open the hard drive. So you guys will take a look. At the, common, the most common issue with the click of death. Again, this hard drive it's just a dummy drive. I have taken it, using it for demos, mm -hmm. and um, I don't recommend you open this any hard drive without a clean room environment and without, of course, you have to wear gloves. But this again is for demonstration purposes. So any comment on YouTube saying that I'm a moron, I appreciate you not putting it down because I'm going to disable the comments. And go ahead, we're going to take away, take the screws out. Okay, and the moment these screws are actually set to a certain amount of torque, okay? Even if you open it in a clean room environment and put it back on, uh, if you don't torque it right, the hard drive will not spin properly, the pressure will not enable it to read, so you have to use a torque screwdriver. And the moment I remove this cover, will introduce airborne particle that can damage a hard drive because most hard drives spin at over 70,000 RPM. Alright, so now let's go ahead and open the hard drive. Oops, I forgot one more. There's a, one more screw in the center right here I showed you. And this is the actual drive head screw right here. That's what the uh, screws that bolt down the drive head so it allows it to pivot. Let's go ahead and, oh, go ahead and open and as you can see Behind it, you'll have a silicone cas gasket right here, okay? And this is the hard drive. The majority of the data, well, all the data are written on this disk right here, okay? This is a 40 gigabyte. Um, this is a one stack, and they have 100 of 400 gigabyte with four or five stacks, okay? What you don't want to touch is the data head right here. This is where all the data is written. This is a clean air filter right here. It uh, it cleans the air, allows uh, allows air to enter the chamber and cleans it. 
This is the print head reader. This, these underneath here is an ultra strong rare earth magnet called neodymium magnet. Extremely strong. Alright, so what I'm going to show you basically is how to take out the hard drive. Take out the disk, okay? Again, if you want to do this in a clean room environment, this is the right way to do it, okay? So what we're going to do is just remove the magnet from here. So I'm going to carefully remove the magnet. It's an extremely strong magnet. Pull it out. Okay, and this is the print head right here, the read, read head. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take out the disk. All right, so this is the s screw that is actually tightening, keeping the torque on the disc in one place. Okay. And again, all the data is written on this disc right here, so you definitely don't want to touch the surface of it. Alright, and so again, when you take your, when you send your hard drive off to a data recovery center, it costs up to three or four thousand dollars, but again, data is really important. And this is exactly what they're going to be doing. But they will be wearing gloves, unlike me. But they're pretty much doing, the, they're going to be doing the same thing, which is same process I'm doing right now. This is the print, this is the read head right here. Majority, 99% of the problem with the click of death is this drive right here. Uh, the print, the uh, read head on the hard drive is bad. So what it does is it, it it's searching for data so it makes a sound like the click of death like you're hearing right now. Okay, And so in that case, as opposed to Changing the this read head, we buy an identical drive, take it apart in the clean room, of course, and have it prep ready. Okay, so what we do is just take the leave the components on the new drive alone, and all you're going to be doing is replacing the disk. So now what I'm going to do is keep this in one place. We get tape right here, real quick. Move this over, make room, and tape this in one place. Okay, so now what you want to do is remove the disc. And of course, again, I'm going to say it again, wear gloves, and this has got to be done in a clean room. This is all data. You pull it out carefully. Okay. No damage, and then you put it on a special tray. Okay, and now. Just pretend this is the new working component and the new disk reader. So now you put in your old disk back into here carefully. Okay, you definitely don't want to damage any component. Drop it in place right there. Okay. So now go ahead and put the tightener on. Drop it in. Now align. the fasteners, put the screw back in, okay, and you don't want to tighten all the way, you got to tighten it evenly because these are all special torque settings to get it to actually spin in a uniform manner. Again, don't touch the data disk. Okay, so now
what you do is you make sure you have consistent torque on all these. And I would get a screwdriver with a torque setting. All right. Even. So now what we're going to do is introduce the magnet back on. And, well, let me explain to you how it reads the data. All right, this is the print head. And this magnet, as you can see, this is charged right here. So the different voltage meter will determine the amount of magnet or repulsion or attraction it gets and allowing this magnet to actually consistently uh, smoothly read the head. And so, again, this coil creates a negative or positive attraction to the magnets. And this is extremely high neodymium rare earth magnet. And we can go ahead and snap it back into place here, as you can see. And so, what it does is this thing unlocks and allows the, the magnet to read the data. Okay, and if you do this in a clean room environment, you know that's all you really need. Is this is how this is what you're paying four or five thousand dollars for someone in a a data recovery lab to do. Is initially it's just simply replacing the data disk into a new drive components, and go ahead and apply this back on, and again. You don't just tighten it. This needs to be a specific torque setting on these screws. Oops, let me put this in the right place. The long one goes here. Not enough torque will introduce more air in here and will not cause the drive to spin correctly. Too much torque will also do the same problem. Will create the same problem. It will limit the amount of RPM the drive can spin and you need to get a torque magnet screwdriver. Okay, so that is how you repair a or transfer data from one bad hard drive to a another hard drive. And data is pretty important. I wouldn't pay five or six thousand dollars because these hard drives, the value of these hard drives are like fifty or sixty bucks. So, unless you have crucial data, I would just buy a new hard drive. And if this was done in a clean room environment and I wore gloves, this drive would be working perfectly. This is Practical IRPMD, safe repair.